In the face of a whole new dichotomy as the United States transitions presidents in the next few months, I want people to remember something. That America isn't about throwing insults. It isn't about hatred. It isn't about yelling at the top of your lungs because things didn't go your way. It's about taking action. Actually, scratch that. You know what this nation has truly been lately? A nation of capitalism. Capitalism ho! Al Fine takes the concept of capitalism and harnesses it into a $14.99 simulation game on Steam, which released on November 11th, 2016. It's published by the Sakai Project and has you running your own store and attempting to make as much money as possible. If this concept sounds oddly familiar, however, it should, as the game follows in the mold of a cult hit game, Rectitier, and Item Shop's Tale. But can Alfine find a way to sell you on a game that you've played the basis of before? Will its unique additions to the gameplay be able to create its own charm similar to Rectitier? Or will the demand for this game fall short? causing a surplus in unsold copies due to it lacking an X Factor. That's what I'm here to find out, but before I begin, this key was obtained from the publisher via keymailer for the purposes of review. That won't change my opinion of the game in the end, but you should know that because of FTC guidelines, as well as the whole morals thing, you know? Let's start with the story. You play as Lewis, whose parents own a shop and are on a long sabbatical. You're not doing much with your life at this point, but that all changes when you run across the Sprite Alice. Or should I say, run into. You end up breaking something precious to her, and being the kind and upstanding guy that you are, you promise to pay her back. And you do that by following in your parents' footsteps, by becoming a merchant and trying to earn the money that way. Along the way, you'll make friends and rivals that will teach little lessons about the merchant world, and you'll participate in a ranking system that doesn't really have any in-game consequences, other than the whole make the most money thing. You'll have to prove your worth in commerce battles, which are 1v1 battles between stores to make profit against each other. You'll have ups, you'll have downs, this is a typical story in these type of games. The best way I can describe this plot is an early Saturday morning cartoon. Basically, friendship, life lessons, and more friendship. Because friendship always wins. When it comes to conflict, while you do have them at times in this plot, they aren't your typical good versus evil scenarios most of the time. It's mostly scenarios in which Lewis has to prove something to himself. Sure, at one point a bad company shows up to mess with things, but really, that's the oddball in the bunch. Which means the game does try to put more focus on the characters and their character progression. Well, sort of, I suppose. You do get a series of characters that interact with here, such as your childhood friend that always seems to be by your side, to an early rival that may have more feelings for you than she lets on. The game actually tries to build these characters despite the story not being the main focus of gameplay here, and several of them have backstories that are interesting, or at least interesting enough to keep my attention. Now with that said, the game has multiple endings depending on how well you do, and I'll give the game this. It doesn't just throw an end screen at you in that case, it actually resolves the current issues and the main plot's issues with those endings in question which is nice to see. It gives you enough reason to replay and see what happens while seeing the effects of what would be an alternate timeline with actual effort put into the writing. Now, I got what I think is the true end, AKA getting a full finish screen with no gallery images missed. If that's the case, then there are some problems here. There are several plot points that the game introduces that don't go anywhere, which is a shame because, well, they are points I would have loved answers on. Like Lewis's parents and where exactly they are and why they've left him for so long. That never comes back up in any sort of significant way in the story, which sort of sucks because I was interested in it. There's also this weird harem element that seems to play up that doesn't seem to go anywhere. 
It doesn't help that two of those characters within that harem fill a similar personality role despite having different backstories. Now granted, like I mentioned before, this is a Saturday morning cartoon situation. So our main protagonist is as oblivious as Ash Ketchum. Yes, this is yet another Pokemon cartoon reference. It's just so easy to make fun of Ash. So, if you're expecting any closure on these relationships that develop, you've got another thing coming. Now, loyal fans of the channel have probably noticed that my reviews have been having constant themes in each of them lately, finding one thing that connects the sections together in commonality. And Alfine is no different here. In this case, this section of the story is commonly done, but it left me wanting more. Don't get me wrong, it's not lacking content. It took me about seven hours to get through a run, and the amount of story content within that run, given the bigger focus on the economy type gameplay, was reasonable. And that content is good in terms of quality. But I sat there wondering if a little bit more time was spent on building more of this world and its characters and the side stories in particular, that you wouldn't have a cult hit on your hands. Okay, now that I've given you the story, let's get to what you're probably here for, the gameplay. As I mentioned in the intro, the game follows in the footsteps of Rectateer and Item Shop's Tale. Your job is simple, get items to sell in your shop, sell them for a profit, and repeat the cycle until the game is over. So let's start with the actual running of the shop. You place items in the appropriate spaces around your shop to sell them to the general public. You determine what price to sell them at depending on the type of shop you're running, as well as the current status of the economy around town, but I'll get into that a little later. When you open your shop, various members of the public will wander in and look around your store. Depending on their taste and the markup that you put on the item, they will either buy the item or react accordingly. Customers will continue to come in until the period of time for your shop being open is completely over. You have three periods during one day, and then you go on to the next. Now, while the customers are in the shop, well, shopping, there's not much you can do. There's only one thing you can actually do, in fact. Each item that you place on the shelves has a weight, and each shelf only carries a certain amount of weight. So if the item happens to run out, you can use Alice to replace it, rather slowly. Now, if you stay on top of things, you may be able to keep the item stocked all the time. But most of the time, you're just waiting for something to gray out in order to actually do something. At the end of each session, you're graded on your performance. And here's one of my first issues with the game. The rating doesn't do a clear job of telling you what you can improve and the rating seems to be rather simple in nature in terms of its algorithm. To be frank, it really seems to heavily emphasize quantity and cash made, which are two good factors of course you are running a shop. But early in the game, there's no way you're hitting those markers. You're never going to get a B rating, you're never going to get an A rating. I wish the game took into account profit percentage based on your inventory and what percentage of your inventory you sold so those early portions of the game actually mean something in terms of those ratings. That way, you can know if you're doing okay given what you have right now. As for items, they fall into three basic categories. Food is cheap to purchase and easy to sell, but you've got to get rid of it quickly or it'll spoil. Equipment is where you'll make the biggest profits, but it really fluctuates over time, so you may not make big profits every day. Then you have your merchandise, which is basically your steady earner, that'll make money here and there, but won't spike at any point. Using the combination of item types and costs to the types of customers you attract to your store, you'll have to develop a strategy of how to go about things. For example, you can attempt to focus on appealing to only women by creating a cute store with items such as teddy bears or wooden bracelets. Or you could focus on a store for adventurers, focusing on high value equipment and armor. Or you could be flexible, not focusing in on any one area, but keeping a variety of items on you at all times, so you try to appeal to everybody. It's really up to you in the end. And the thing is, 
those factors do seem to play a huge part in the game, especially on the higher difficulties. Now, if you play on easy, you really don't have to worry about things like the cute versus cool factor. But when you play on hard, the amount of customers and their willingness to spend definitely makes a difference in how well you do on any one day. Attempting to play the middle can be very costly, especially when you're in a commerce battle and need all the profits you can get. The game does throw some variants at you, in some visible and invisible forms. For a visible form example, the game will make it clear when items will be overpriced and underpriced depending on demand. You'll need to take advantage appropriately, buying the appropriate items when underpriced, while selling them when overpriced. But over time, the gameplay starts to lose steam. While the game does throw some variants at you, it's not enough in the end because you find yourself repeating the same actions over and over and over again. And there's too little item variety even with the upgrades that are available to really take the strategy to the next gameplay level. It needed one or two systems specific to the items and an appropriate amount of items to really engross simulation players. Something like specific item hot streaks, such as a famous person seeing eating some fried scorpion and everyone wanting to grab it at that point. Again, I'm going to repeat what I said in the story section. The gameplay here is good at the surface, but it feels like a little bit more time that would have been put into the secondary systems and the game design would have taken the game to the next level, especially for secondary playthroughs. I really don't have the want to play this game a second time like Rectatir. There's just too little to work with over time, and I felt like I saw the entire game of what it has to offer. One of the biggest problems I have with Alfine, however, is the lack of controls or options when it comes to gameplay. Like changing the gameplay speed, for example. You can cycle through three different speeds while playing, but it's in a circular format. You have to move from normal, to faster, to zoom. You can't move backwards and go back to normal once you are at faster. Even if you quickly attempt to cycle from faster to normal, you do seem to lose a reasonable time chunk regardless, which can make the difference in a couple of sales. But that lack of controls also compounds with the lack of references and information. The game doesn't have any menus where you can see the information in the original tutorials. And because the original tutorials are all text-based screens, it's very easy to miss a vital set of information the first time around. For example, it took me a while to figure out that I could tell how close I was in terms of a sale thanks to the customer text bubble type reactions. It made sense when I put two and two together, a set of dots meaning they were considering it, and an angry cloud meaning they were frustrated. But why isn't that information something I can look up quickly? See, that's the really weird thing about Alfine. The information is all over the place in terms of usefulness. For example, you'd think that knowing the types of stores that your competition is in would make a difference in the end in terms of the commerce battles. Well, you can find that information out by going to the bar at night. And yet, I see no in-game usefulness for that information. Even battling one-on-one -on -one with them, thinking that I may take customers from them or they may take customers from me, it made no difference profit-wise. The gameplay was the same. It was like I was on my own. But on the flip side, I can go to the church and find out what the weather is the next couple of days. But then again, why would I need to know the weather a couple of days before it happens? I could just react on that day. It's not that useful. Except for the fact that once in a while, the priest will tell you that items will increase or decrease in price soon so you can buy and sell things accordingly. The information is just all over the place. Now, Rectatir fans may remember there was an action part to that gameplay, but Alfine doesn't have that. Granted, you do go to dungeons, but you don't control the adventurers. You just send them in a simulation and gathering element. Now, I don't have a problem with the focus on this simulation aspect in this game. In fact, I think the action element in Rectatir may be its weakest part. The problem with Alfine's version is that the item numbers in question and the lack of dungeon variety at a point means that, well, it starts to get repetitive 
and you wonder why you keep on coming back to this. Now you may think with all the complaints that I had that the gameplay overall disappointed me and I have an overall negative opinion of it. And let me be clear, Rectatir and Item Shop's Tale has more variety and more gameplay elements to work off of and this game doesn't live up to that expectation. And yet, I still enjoyed this gameplay because the base gameplay does work so well at a casual level and it has that charm factor. It's laid back with some strategy elements, but the little touches in the presentation help make up for the bigger complaints I had. The weakest part of Alfine, without a shadow of a doubt, is its technical element. And let's be clear, for the type of gameplay that Alfine presents, you don't need fancy graphics or to be pushing the technical envelope. But with that said, the game still should be offering up some of the basics for the PC platform, as you still want some customization for the variety of players out there. Let me start by showing you the resolution options for the game. Let's start with the base resolution here. I did not stretch out the bounds of this footage for the sake of this section like I have been doing for the majority of this video. So this is the base resolution as the game will present it to you. Okay. Now let me show you the second option for the resolutions. Now let me show you the full screen mode. Now the windowed mode. You probably don't notice a difference. That's because there are no resolution options, or full screen options, or any real options of any sort. It's really disappointing. Look, I think a full screen mode, even if you just put a border around the main footage, is a requirement nowadays on the PC. When I play games, I don't want distractions around me like my desktop. It just bothers me that there's no customization at all attempted here. In fact, there's no options whatsoever. If I don't want the speed up key to be S, for example, doesn't matter. I don't have a choice as there's no bindable keys or even controller options outside third party tools. And look, I don't expect even graphics options in games like this. They are small independent games that don't rely on its looks necessarily. But again, I do expect some basic options, and Alfine doesn't even bother with those. Which doesn't help when you run into issues. Now the game doesn't necessarily crash, but as you play for longer play sessions, you will run into technical issues, such as textures not properly loading, or the game indicating that it can't allocate any more VRAM. In terms of the frequency of these issues, it happened once every 90 minutes of gameplay in my estimation. When it does happen, it can screw with your ability to find the save button thanks to the textures and lack of non-mouse driven confirmation prompts. In short, save reasonably often if you play this game. Hopefully this issue is fixed in the upcoming days after this review, because the technical element of this game shouldn't be causing any problems for any system, let alone VRAM issues. Now, here's a Dragnix review fact on how I review games. For about 70% of the game, I play with the music off. At what I deem to be key points of change in the gameplay, I'll turn back on the music for a period of time. That's for a reason. It allows me to put uninterrupted music in the background of the gameplay I record while keeping the regular sound there with my editing style. But you may notice that for a good amount of this review, I haven't had any regular audio sounds playing in the gameplay, just the music. Well, that's because I mentioned before, the game doesn't have an options menu. So I didn't think that there was an option to turn off the music and leave only the ambient sounds. Lo and behold though, the option does actually exist. In the gallery menu. Dear developers, do not put options in random menus of your games. It not only doesn't make logical sense, it pisses people off who find the options after going to the gallery to see if he missed any endings or images for the sake of completion. It doesn't make sense UI wise, it just feels lazy that you couldn't make another menu option and decided that this was the best option available. Look. 
Alfine does not pass the technical test. If you need options even in the smallest of your games, avoid Alfine because, well, it really has none. Even if the game doesn't need FOV sliders or adjustments of texture quality at this indie level of game, it still needs basic options for the PC platform. And Alfine definitely doesn't help its own product here. Let's finish off the sections by talking a tiny bit about the game's presentation. Like the technical section, it's clear that the presentation isn't exactly the main focus by any measure. But unlike the technical section, that doesn't mean the game doesn't try and deliver some good content. For the visuals during gameplay, the game actually does have some okay options in terms of the store that you create, but they are limited in terms of the different number options available. And while the game isn't about strong visuals, the bustling pace of characters coming in and out of the store does work in terms of creating a nice atmosphere. Now granted, the detail on the characters isn't that impressive, mostly due to the camera angle chosen here, but hey, it does do the job nonetheless. As for the cutscenes and more visual novel side of the presentation, it really captures the tone of the storytelling and the light-hearted nature of the game. The line and color work here is good, as it's able to add reasonable detail in the background without making it a primary focus. The characters' designs are simple yet expressive, focusing on key character features and clothing, such as an oversized bow or the spirals of a character's hair. It's just generally pleasant to look at. Most of the complaints I have about the presentation actually has to do with the UI. The top meters are just confusing at times, and in particular, the points one. Those are the points you use to buy new upgrades such as shelf space and more shelves. Those totals can be in the hundreds or thousands of currency, but for some odd reason, the developers here decided to make it a bar that doesn't tell you the actual value you've got and a point system that translates to a thousand spendable units. Why not just show the value like you did with the days to the collection below? The thing is, it led to me making unnecessary trips to the merchant shop because I thought I had enough points only to find out that no, I estimated wrong based on the bar. It's just dumb. Sound design is minimal at best. And while you don't expect a lot of sounds from a simulation game like this, considering they could get old really fast, it would have been nice to see some voice acting in the cutscenes. But even beyond that, there's no footsteps or ambient sound during the shopping phases of the game. Basically, you can turn off the sound here and really not lose any of the experience. Just take a listen to see what I'm talking about. The music is what you'd expect for this type of game. Over the top happy type music with repetitive sections and a fun yet goofy sound to it. It does change music appropriately when it needs to based on the tone it's going for gameplay and story wise. Granted, the music isn't horribly memorable and it won't be getting stuck in my head anytime in the near future. But it does the job, so take a listen. Overall, the presentation has some highs and lows and does do the game justice in certain portions, but isn't going to draw anybody in itself for a purchase. In the end, Alfine is a charming little game that doesn't necessarily capture the cutthroat system that is capitalism, but goes for a more uplifting tale of overcoming adversity that's put in front of you. While the game doesn't necessarily make it to the bar that wrecked a tier set due to its limited bag of tricks over time, 
it still draws you in with a touching story and some good base gameplay design. It's a game that's not for everyone for sure, and its score shows that, coming in at a 74 out of 100. This means that the game is worth a purchase at full price if it's one of your favorite game genres. Otherwise, it's a game that you can wait for a sale on. But as always for this channel and the full reviews, you have to take into account my enhancer system. These are the more subjective elements when it comes to evaluating if a game is for you. Basically, if you strongly fall into a category listed in an enhancer, apply the score modification to the base score. If that changes the first digit of your score, then you'll need to refer to my scoring guide to see where the game now falls. Again, the basis of this channel is to match the game to you. But if you don't like the enhancer system, then ignore it. The base score is designed to be for the majority of the audience. As always, I recommend getting second opinions on reviews due to the fact that, hey, I'm a human reviewer and therefore I can make mistakes from time to time despite my dedicated effort. To find those reviews, I would normally suggest OpenCritic which allows you to follow specific reviewers you trust while ignoring ones you don't. At the time of making this video, however, there are no other reviews on OpenCritic for this game. But over time, I'm betting that the game finds a couple of reviewers to look at it. Anyway, that's it for Alfine. You'll get a critical eye for another game this week, as well as an Overwatch Friday video to round it out. And if you liked this video, I would hit that like button and maybe share the video with a friend, especially for a game like Alfine, which really needs the word of mouth to find its niche audience. If you like this content, stay around by hitting that subscribe button. And if you want to keep the amount of content I produce up on a regular basis, consider becoming a patron by donating to the Patreon. Anyway, this is Dragnik signing out, telling you to keep your chin up and don't let the harshness of life get you down. Because hey, there's cool stuff to buy around every corner, and capitalism needs you to keep buying in order to succeed. Oh, and always, keep on gaming.